Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, and if you cast your mind back all the way to two days ago on Monday, where I had launched my first moon mission on this Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Better Than Ever career mode playthrough! Wah! Not only was it that, but we'd actually managed to get two Kerbals up in one go, which I think is uh, quite an achievement for my first moon mission. Now, there were a few problems, and this has led to us being in this scenario here, where we are racing over the surface of the moon at quite a rate, but I am actually out of fuel now, and if we ever see the, 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 the map again, I can tell you that this is not going fast enough to be up in orbit. Which already has my mind racing. Obviously, we're going to have to get some sort of rescue mission on the go. But I think first we can follow these guys back down. We did a little bit of time acceleration. And now, whilst keeping an eye on that beautiful orb where we came from, it's time to reposition the craft and wait for the inevitable explosions that follow on. Uh, and, and here we go. I am, I am totally with these people here. Ah, oh. Well not the greatest end to my moon mission but i have ideas i i think i know how i'm going to save them a quick reload and we're going to get to the space center having a small shifty around i realized that i don't really want to send more kerbals up to the moon to rescue the kerbals because those kerbals are just going to get stuck with the kerbals and we're going to end up with more kerbals on the moon so i decided we need the um pro bodies this means we need more science so we head back to the moon to take control of bob and drop out of the spacecraft so we can get the uh the moon contract finished the good thing about kerbal space program is if you're just kind of floating in uh, uh the air with well i say in the air floating off the surface with your EVA pack, you can get um, low altitude science, uh, low altitude space science on the moon without actually being on the moon, which is all sorts of great and gives us loads of science to buy these two. You notice the second purchase is really going to bite me in the bottom later, but we, we will talk about that later. Just remember, I bought the general construction on a whim. So after the science purchases, we make this vessel, the Bang Zoom. It is going straight to the moon. Uh, and we had um, quite an interesting trip with this. Well, I think I did anyway. Uh, you'll notice that we had the solid boosters around the outside. Look at that beautiful. And we've got this wonderful design in here. Uh, basically, I wanted to get like my fuel tanks away as quick as possible. And well, there, there we go. We, got, we ended up with this asparagus type system. Uh, you'll notice that this bottom bit here is all about the lifting. And now, brilliantly, this is all about getting us into orbit and then off to the moon. Once again, we're using the method of waiting for the moon to rise above Kerbin's horizon before we just boost for all we are worth. Waiting for these fuel tanks to run down before we discard them and just drift on our way. I say discard them, these guys are actually coming to the moon. And that doesn't take too long at all, because here we are in the in the, the orbit of the moon, down at Periaps. We are circularizing our orbit. This takes next to no time. Uh, I do leave it quite eccentric because I note that the other vessel is all the way on the other side of the planet, but the light is on this side. So we need to time warp our way around and make sure that those guys are in the light before we land, because oh, night landings, they're so awkward. Here we are then, so with everything lining up, I just bring my Periaps into an appropriate place to be able to make this landing. I tried to keep it below 10 kilometers, but above the, the, the treacherous five kilometers of the height of all the moons on uh, all the mountains on the moon. That is quite something to watch out for, so be aware. And wait until we drift over the top of them here before I start boosting for all I'm worth. I like the term boosting, it turns out. Um, and we're going to try and just nullify all our velocity because obviously we want to land right here. Finally, our external fuel tanks have run out, so uh, we dumped those pretty quickly. And now I'm just kind of angling my velocity towards our landing site. Obviously, this is not quite as easy as I'm making it look here. You will notice that I have absolutely no SAS control. Um, and that has made things incredibly awkward. As you are going to watch as we come down here, I'm trying to um, push myself back over towards there. But for some reason, this crater that we're currently flying over seems to hold a sway over this, this vessel. Uh, I, I push myself around, but it, it just it just keeps drawing me back and drawing me down and to the point where we don't even make it over the lip of the crater before we're so close to the floor that I'm like, ah, panic and just try and boost our way away from from smashing into the floor so hard that it hurts. I switched to um, chase view to see if that helped at all. Here's a spoiler, it really didn't. Uh, and eventually we perform this landing here. Uh, I do a few wobbly things, doing my best to try and stand this back upright, or at least make it a little bit more um, 
uh, accessible to get to. Uh, it turns out that was uh, very much a bad idea. I just uh, started the ball rolling, or in this case, the rocket rolling, and everything went terribly wrong. Now, what we're about to do here is going to show you the difference between making a rendezvous on the surface with SAS and without. Uh, with SAS, it was just the simple case of pointing in the right direction and then use the uh, retrograde and prograde markers to, to fly around. Though I will note, at this particular point in time, it wasn't um, auto-guiding towards my retrograde. I didn't know why, it was just acting like normal SAS. That was fine, I could deal with that. Uh, and all we need to do now is just bring ourselves down with a tiny little bunny hop down the surface here to bring ourselves within i believe it is the 30 meters for the kerbal attachment system fuel pipes to go across of course bringing it down close to the vehicle is not the end of this particular mission uh, first we need to get at least one of the kerbals out to start playing around with the fuel pipes and at the same time as that just try and you know have some general tomfoolery on the moon uh, the first thing that concerns me is that bob getting out of the vessel completely flipped out its SAS system so we used Jeb to try and stand it back upright again that, that kind of worked all right but in that meantime Bob went completely ragdoll I have full control over him at the moment I just cannot get him to walk um, I, I had a lot of fun doing this I have to say it was quite a lot of fun just kind of flying around this thing that was just like all floppy and blah 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 but anyway you will notice that I had parked it just a little bit too far away and I was like well you know whilst we have him here we're gonna try and get this attached somewhere and yeah there we go the, we, we, we got the, the the node attached but the the vessel was just far too far away so we're gonna get Jeb to have a little fly down and he overdoes it because you know Jeb is a bit of a hot shot he needs to really try and show off when he tries to do these things uh, no idea why and we're gonna blow stuff up so a small reload and nowhere near as many fun fun times we end up in this situation where we can literally just get Bob out of the vessel take a run round grab the pipe and hook everything up uh, I, I, you know, I like these nice easy missions, but I do kind of prefer uh, telling you guys about the ones where it's all gone a little bit weird because, hey, there's better stuff to watch there. So we do a little bit of a roll on the, uh, the robot vessel because, hey, we need to get that fuel pipe back up. And then we uh, attach here and start hitting the pump button. And, and this is where I realized that things really have gone wrong for me. Um, I really should learn to read the patch notes because no matter what I do, we're going to end up with troubles here. Neither alt clicking nor the Kerbal Attachments pump here are working. And this is of course because I've not upgraded my R&D department. This is going to cost us a whopping 510,000 to upgrade. Now that's kind of alright, we are halfway there. Having a look through these um, contracts that are available to us, uh, the, most, the most profitable ones are the visual survey ones. But we don't have the science for that because I bought the advanced construction on a whim uh, and you'll see that we've only got 65 science up there. So we take a contract that will give us an another whopping 75 uh, points of science. And this contract is to test the LV-1, that is the tiny little rocket engine for ants, on an escape trajectory from Kerbin, which I feel should be relatively easy to do, especially given all the um, experimenting I've just done with solid rocket boosters. Uh, vi again, video coming out for that. Okay, so the rocket design with this I don't think could have got any more simple. We've got the biggest solid booster we can possibly put on the bottom because they're cheaper than liquid fuels. Um, and then when uh, I turned that down to 50%, um, that got us through the vast majority of the atmosphere. And when that ran out, we went for the liquid fueled engine. Now I could have put us in an orbit, got that orbit nice and circular, pushed our orbit all the way out. But as all we had to do was get on an escape velocity, uh, escape trajectory, I thought the best thing we could possibly do was just point upwards and thrust for all we're worth. And it turned out that was indeed the winner plan here. And we've already made the contract here. We're just watching this beautiful vessel spin round. Uh, and at some point, we're gonna come back to this. So that contract fulfilled. It's time to go and buy ourselves some uh, useful plane parts. There we go, all of those. Gives us 47 science left over. Not really much we can do with that. And we're gonna come and have a look at all the survey information. Now, there was one set on the other side of the planet and one set really close by. And as the other, as the set on the other side of the planet was only worth 10 grand more, I thought I'd take the ones close by. Uh, this gave us the uh, objectives of two EVA reports on the surface and one crew report uh, below a certain altitude. Now obviously with the two EVA reports, we need to figure out some way of getting this thing on the floor and back off again 
without landing gear, which um, was a little bit tricky to figure out. But thankfully, in the Kerbal group that I'm part of, or that I run, I suppose is the one way to go it, um, Alex Hiley actually came up with an idea to use Separatrons as a, sort of a VTOL thing. Um, so if I combine that idea with the idea of using the uh, support struts to make my first takeoff, everything should be all right. There's just the uh, the small case of balancing all the, the Separatrons around the outside, which, again, shouldn't be too much of an issue as long as we get everything else uh, looking good. As for the basic airframe, I had a slight issue with the wings being too wide apart. Um, so with the, the increased part, uh, with the reduced part count where it, that comes from taking those down, I decided to put two tail uh, wings on there. I'm not, I'm not sure why. And now we can't start balancing Separatrons, or at least now we start putting spe uh, Separatrons on and seeing how well they're balanced. And we're going to call this vessel the Spent Ostrich, because you know, that just seemed like a good name. So, two things of note here. Bill is a rubbish pilot and my Separatrons are quite mildly unbalanced. Uh, but I say Bill is a rubbish pilot, but here we go. Here is him coming away and walking away from that takeoff. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome uh, Rich Mull to the uh, Kerbal Space Program. He is our latest pilot who is going through all the simulations of the different aircraft designs that we're trying to get into the air using these Separatrons. As you can see, the testing process was quite extensive. But eventually we ended up with something that looked a little bit like this. And that worked perfectly. Um, I, when it was in the air, I had full control and the takeoff was more than palatable. So I think this is the design we're going to work with. We just need to attach um, stuff underneath it, the, the, the launching clamp, and of course, wait for our engine to spool up so that we can take off. Just like that. Perfect. Now, our, our target is all the way over there. And I don't think I'm going to make you watch this entire flight because believe me, it was long enough just flying it and even with time acceleration, just flying in a straight line over there is a little bit pointless. Coming in for the crew report was a relatively easy thing to do. I just had to make sure I was at the right altitude and hit the right buttons. And then we flew all the way over here where I managed to deploy my um, parachutes just a little bit too late. It turns out that the uh, the dot on the map of how big that, that area is, it's not very big at all. And also note that two parachutes is not enough to make a safe landing with this plane. So I try and use my jet engines to... Uh, uh, give ourselves a little uh, push before we land and this gives us this little gap between um, the cockpit and the rest of my vehicle here and I'm not sure whether I've broken it or not but when I get inside it gives me full control but we need to run and we run quite a distance to, to get this um, EVA report you see we run 800 meters that is quite a way but of course nothing is too much for a plucky young Kerbal trying to prove himself so he runs this well, now kilometer and a half before getting back into his vehicle and thinking about this takeoff. Um, so one thing I had noticed was somehow I'd ended up with an uneven number of separatrons. I don't even know how this has happened. I designed the plane balanced. Oh, and isn't that spool up noise amazing? So we're basically launching the same craft to finish this mission because I believe that this vehicle can do it. And after a little bit of uh, joy riding from Rich Mile here, we, we, we do a few barrel rolls and just fly our way down. We eventually make ourselves to the location where we deploy parachutes and oh, generally get a landing done all nice and efficient like. Of course, due to my like ridiculously short attention span, I really wish that uh, parachutes would let, give us the option of dropping a little bit faster and then flurring out properly at the bottom or at least opening up lower down. I know there are tweakables to let that happen, but uh, anyway. So we did our, our uh, EVA report and now we're going to try and do what this vessel is designed to do. And did you see that beautiful vertical takeoff there? Not a single set of landing gear are in sight and we took off like a, a, like a dream. We, we wound up our, vest, our um, engine until I could feel that it was pushing into the ground and then we fired those Separatrons and that gave us just enough oomph to get us off the ground and into this beautiful flight here. Of course this now leaves us with the problem of landing. Not having an engineer on board means that we cannot repack our parachutes but Rich Mal is an experienced pilot, well he's not an experienced pilot, but he is a pilot with a trick or two up his sleeve. So what he's going to do is try and get down as close to the water as possible and just constantly flare, um, trying to like burn off as much speed, well I say burn off, trying to drop off as much speed as possible. And when I realise that we can't keep our, our um, altitude up any higher, um, we slam our tail into the water to allow that all to break 
and our uh, capsule to remain intact and not kill our pilot. And whilst we watch these bobbing air intakes, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this um, attempt at a rescue mission. We are four-fifths of the way there. I will see you next time when we're going to make all the money and save those kerbals. Bye!